Coming up today on LinkedIn News Live, learning new skills has become the new currency of the modern workplace. We'll hear from Nationwide's SVP of Talent and Organizational Effectiveness on why upskilling and reskilling is key to mobility. Plus, the latest from our Workforce Confidence Index is a time to widen your job hunt. All that next. Hi, I'm Nina Melendez. Welcome to LinkedIn News Live, where the business conversation begins with you. It is March 4th, and let's start with a look at the top headlines trending today on LinkedIn. Payroll growth slowed in February. Stores around the country is, uh, Disney stores are gonna be closing dozens of stores, and women are more likely to pivot in their careers. Let's take a deeper dive into that one. In a LinkedIn survey examining the job hunting strategies being considered by unemployed men and women, results showed that the share of female job seekers willing to switch industries or functions has climbed to 80%. By contrast, male counterparts' willingness to consider such pivots has remained flat at 74%. For more stories like these, you can check out the news module to the right of your screen, or if you're on mobile, you can just click in the search box. 2020 saw businesses across sectors face catastrophic job losses. At the same time, there's been a rapid acceleration in things like digitization, corporate consolidation, and deglobalization. The result, a unique situation where there are millions of unemployed people and a huge opportunity to close the skills gap. Joining me now to talk more about all this is Rebecca Schofer, SVP of Talent and Organizational Effectiveness at Nationwide. Now, Nationwide a year ago uh, launched a program, a five-year program, to reskill 28,000 associates with personalized learning curriculums. So Rebecca is just a person we want to speak with. Rebecca, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So reskilling and upskilling, Rebecca. Tell me what that looks like in terms of content, format, and investment. So Nationwide built a model in which to think about it. So really focusing on soft skills, we call them lead, innovate, and adapt. And the way to think about it is lead is about the way in which you work through others. It doesn't require you to be a formal leader in a traditional sense of the word, but that everyone has the capability to lead as they work with others. Innovate is about how you get work done, your personal curiosity and your drive to move things forward. And then adapt is how you adjust those things based off of challenges, obstacles, or the situation. So we've really focused on those skills for more of the soft skill side of the house. But then also recognizing where we are today in the world and a lot of the trends that you've talked about previously, also really focusing on digital literacy. And we've split those into different skills, everything from user experience to digital transformation and even including data and analytics. Why did Nationwide decide to invest money in this? It really was an investment in our associates. Our number one value is we value people. And this was really just living up to that value and giving them the extraordinary care with which we extend to our members, carrying that through as we do top of mind to our associates. And so this investment was giving them an opportunity to invest in themselves. And the company really backed it strongly uh, through top of house support from our board, from our CEO, from all of our top leadership, as well as what I think is the most amazing part of it which is building an eight hour learning goal for every single associate into our performance objectives. So just really reinforcing that investing in yourself and continuous learning is in something important and the company values it. Have the associates responded well? 2020 was our first year out of the gate and the response has been amazing. We had nearly 99% of our 28,000 associates complete their eight hour learning uh, in that year period, which is phenomenal. Uh, the associates really took advantage of it, which is great. But it didn't just stop there. There were a number of associates who went above and beyond that eight hour lo learning goal because uh, once they got to experience it, they just wanted to keep learning more. And we've kicked off this year and are excited to see people take advantage of it again. 
I want to bring up a poll actually that we are asking our members on the platform of upskilling and reskilling. How important is reskilling to your personal, professional, or career growth? Please reply. We'd love to hear from you. A, very, I'm always learning. B, someone, it's helpful. C, not important at all. Or D, other. Let us know. We will be revisiting these answers at the end of the show and would love to get Rebecca's feedback. Um, and let me say hi to some people joining us also from around the world. We've got Lucy from Kenya, David from California, and Juan from Panama, and Dolores from Texas. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions for Rebecca, uh, ask away, put them in the comment box. Um, she is the guru of all things upskilling and reskilling. She's SVP of Talent and Organizational Effectiveness at Nationwide. Um, Rebecca, I, I had to learn some software the other day and uh, in order to get my job done, and I was frustrated by it. I'm curious if you are getting responses from your associates depending on the generation. Or is, is the younger generation more apt or more keen to learn these new skills, or the, is the older generation less? What are you seeing? Uh, we actually did a survey, it was optional, in our Future of Work platform asking associates how they felt about the experience, and we universally got a positive response. I think that uh, what's unique about what we have is that there are so many courses available to you that you have the opportunity to truly personalize what you're learning to your specific needs. I will say there are some individual differences in people's preferences of how much they love that lead, innovate, and adapt curriculum versus how much they love that digital curriculum. But I, I think the idea is that we're just meeting associates where they are and giving them the tools that they need to be successful. Uh, personally, with uh, all of the work we're doing with Teams and some other software, I found it to be so incredibly helpful to teach me all of the things that I just needed to operate in this you know, new virtual working environment. So in this curriculum then at Nationwide, then that's tailor-made for each associate, what are you finding is the skill that is most sought after by these employees? So in a lot of cases, we're seeing things around teams, for sure, in the digital environment. We're seeing people wanting to dig deeper into the digital tools and resources that are available to them so that they can become more proficient. But I also think that we're seeing things around collaboration and communication and uh, velocity. How do we move things faster and quicker in the world that we're operating in? And then a lot of things around resilience, which is important for everyone in the world that we're living in, not just at work. It's interesting you bring up resilience because LinkedIn uh, did our own study. Its fifth annual workplace learning report came out uh, just several days ago. And according to LD leaders globally, resilience and digital fluency were cited as number one and number two important skills across every country. And I was surprised that resilience was one of them. Can you, what, what's your take? I mean, when I think about resilience, what I think about is being able to manage complexity, being able to navigate that complexity, and then being able to recover and respond to any challenges that you face along the way. I think those are skills that are critically important, whether you're an athlete or you work in a company and you're trying to figure out what's or as obvious as you'd like it to be. And then all of us experience setbacks along the way and how you respond and recover to that are critically important. I think what's, you know, every time I read the news, I see something where I feel like having strong skills as it relates to resilience and agility could only be helpful. Completely agree. Let's say hi to some people who are uh, joining us now. Stephanie from Ohio, Ricky from Tennessee, Fernanda from Brazil, and Victor from Argentina. Fernanda and Victor, I would love to hear about what upscaling looks like uh, uh, in South America. So please put some comments in the stream and let us know. And Vikram says, learning embedded into our own objectives makes it tangible, measurable, and accountable for an employee. This is a great initiative at Nationwide. So Rebecca, you've got a fan there. Um, I'd love to bring up a comment actually from the International Labor Organization. They said, it says that new forces are transforming the world of work, technological development, climate change, demographic shifts, globalization. Today's skills will not match the jobs of tomorrow and newly acquired skills may quickly become obsolete. This was part of a report that came out in 2019. So this was 
pre-pandemic. Pre mm -hmm. This sounds like there's um, uh, quite a lot of catching up to do. So my question is, does the onus to stay up to date fall on the employee or the employer? Uh, so this is my personal belief. My personal belief is that companies give employees, associates, the opportunities to develop, the resources to develop, but it's up to the associates to really take advantage of those, match them to their development needs, and then carry those forward. And I think this Future of Work initiative by Nationwide is just a perfect example of that. Giving, up, giving associates the resources to do it, that eight hour goal gives them the permission and the time to engage, which is often a barrier. And then also giving them such a wide array of things to choose from that they can really make it their own and invest in themselves. So I think uh, it's a lot of things all together at once, but I think there's both places, but associates really need to own it. I'm curious how you guys came up with the eight hour goal. Was there something scientific about the eight hour time frame? I think it was just being thoughtful around balancing the need for digital literacy in today's environment, as well as balancing the need for some of those soft skills in lead, innovate, and adapt, and wanting to make sure that the goal was sufficient, that people could really develop and hone their skills, and make sure that associates understood uh, the importance and the value that the company placed on it. Well, Ricky in the stream says that resilience also helps with navigating change and overcoming setbacks. Completely agree. And Antonio has a question. He says, in your opinion, Rebecca, what are the most important skills in the 2021 scenario? It's, uh, it's interesting. I was talking about this recently with my team. What I think is, uh, as people are working from home and maybe even now working from home longer term or indefinitely, what I worry about is what I call the spaces in between, is those moments where I used to run into you in a hallway or the cafeteria or maybe between meetings, waiting for a meeting room to open up. And now I have to manufacture those moments. I have to seek you out and I have to communicate with you in new and different ways. And so that requires new collaboration skills, new relationship skills, new communication skills, as well as some digital savviness to figure out how to do that uh, and be thoughtful about it. So for me, that's really what's top of mind in 2021 is to how we stay connected with each other and do it in a way that is authentic, but also reflects the environment that we're in. I love that. That makes me laugh because I think of how post-pandemic there's so many jokes about how we, we're not going to know how to socialize anymore. We're not used to seeing each other. Um, this actually brings me to my next uh, question for you, Rebecca. You have a background in psychology. I'm curious how that background has helped you in your role as a talent and organizational effectiveness SVP. Absolutely. The background in psychology for me has really just made me curious about people. Uh, and that curiosity has carried through to want to understand the why behind things. Why do people feel this way? Why are we seeing these things? Why are these the right skills? And asking those deep questions to really get a better understanding of our associates so that the resources and tools that we're putting out to help them do what they're intended to do. When you think of the future landscape and what you see in your in your role, is there anything regarding upskilling and reskilling that concerns you um, or that keeps you up at night? It, it goes back to honestly the answer I just gave you. I really want to make sure that we're helping associates and that we're giving them the resources and tools that they need to be successful in the future. And if we can do that well, we can uh, take care of them with the extraordinary care that Nationwide is so good at, that we can value them and that they feel valued. Uh, those are the things that really keep me up at night, making sure that we are providing that care. And I imagine that upskilling and reskilling is so important for internal mobility and upward mobility. Uh, is there tangible evidence that, for example, when you go for a job that is a little bit above, you know, which is a raise essentially from what you're doing, that people look at any kind of certifications that you've gained and say you're the person for the job because of this certification? Are you are you seeing tangible evidence of that? I think there are tons of conversations and we're seeing a lot more about skills based hiring and that making sure that people have the skills that they need to be successful in the role 
And uh, I know from a talent acquisition perspective that that's certainly top of mind for our recruiters and uh, absolutely conversations that we're having for the company. I think that that's a trend holistically across all organizations, particularly as skills profiles change and new skills are coming in, exactly what you're talking about from an upskilling perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's tangible evidence out there, absolutely, that the skills-based approach to hiring is, is here. Rebecca, we have tons of people who are writing so many questions in the stream. I want to get to a few of them. Um, some of them we've sort of touched on before, but let's hit on them again. Juan asks, what do you think are the top five skills every professional should have? So for me, it's about collaboration. It's about innovation, continuous learning. It's about digital savviness, whatever form that takes for you. And then lastly, I think there's something around velocity, the speed of decision making without sacrificing effectiveness that I think this new digital world demands. So if you, Rebecca Schofer's top five, that's what you got. <laughs> and you mentioned digital savviness. Vikram is asking, can you expand on what, on what com compensation? on what's needed, what competencies are needed, what skills are needed for digital literacy. Absolutely, so Nationwide has six of them. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have all of them at the tip of my tongue. But like I said, they do range everything from user experience, so making sure that when you're considering a digital environment, you are really putting the user at the forefront. So being mindful of the experience, not just the technicality behind it or the, you know, how in which you're coding, but what's the experience. Everything from digital transformation, so strategic thinking about digital, making sure it's meeting customers or users where they are. There's also real hardcore digital skills and the tools that you're using every day to work and collaborate and connect, as well as data and analytics, I think falls in this bucket as well and certainly Nationwide defines it in that way. Rebecca, I have a great question from Deborah. Now, I know you don't work in HR, but this is sort of related. She says it would be helpful for HR to give feedback to applicants about why they were not chosen or hired to help those who are looking for jobs to understand what new skills they need to learn. Any thoughts on that? Sure, I do work in HR, but, oh. <laughs> but what I would tell you is, uh, so I work in talent management, not talent acquisition in my current role. Uh, but what I would tell you is in the absence of information that you're getting from a company, is there something you could do to self-assess? Look at your skills, look at your experience, go back to that job description and identify any gaps uh, and maybe you can self, you know, you can find for yourself some things that may not have been a match uh, that you can continue to work on and grow uh, in the absence of any information. That's great advice. I want to bring up our poll actually would love for you to weigh in, Rebecca, on some of the results that we've got. So the question was, how important is reskilling to your personal and professional or career growth? I mean, I guess it's not a huge surprise. 84% of, peop of people have said very, I'm always learning. 13% said somewhat it's helpful, uh, not important at all, 2%, and one other, 84%, um, no, no surprise there. What do you think, Rebecca? I think continuous learning is probably one of the most important competencies we all have. The ability to continue to invest in yourself, to take pride in that, and to make sure that you are really current on your skills. I think you probably um, take for granted that mm -hmm. you are doing that every day. As you are scanning the world, you are taking in information and you are adjusting the way, the way in which you approach life. Um, uh, and uh, so don't take that for granted and, and recognize that continuous learning is an investment in yourself and that you're worth it. I feel like I've learned so much in this past year, just this whole work from home thing is I'm co constantly learning. So thank you for that. Rebecca, thanks for joining us today on the show. It was a real pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. That was Rebecca Schofer. She is SVP of Talent and Organizational Effect Effectiveness at Nationwide. And tomorrow, let's take a look at what Andrew Seaman will be talking about. He'll be speaking with one expert on how job seekers can follow up with recruiters and hiring managers. You won't want to miss that conversation. That is tomorrow at noon. Thank you so much for watching LinkedIn News Live. I'm Nina Melendez.